Hello, welcome back to Central Coast Newspapers Video News. I'm Jackie Pearson. Today we're joined by Councillor Rebecca Gale Collins. Uh, welcome, Rebecca. Thank Lovely you, Jackie. to have you here. So, I, I was wondering if we could start by giving people a little bit of background about your professional life and um, how long you've you've been politically active. How long have you been in the Liberal Party? I've uh, been in the Liberal Party now for a few years. Um, and what, what was the attraction? Well, it's in line with my personal values. So I believe in individual freedom. Uh, so freedom of thought, freedom of worship, uh, and also free enterprise. So for me, it's a no-brainer. Um, and as a, as a child coming through 80s and 90s um, with Bob Hawke and, and Keaton, um, impacts upon my childhood and friends that I witnessed with the high interest rates um, and consequences for that, people losing homes, meant that I was always going to end up being a Liberal voter for me. So I believe in empowering people to be the best they can possibly be through okay. education and, and job opportunities. So now you've gone from being a branch member and, and doing that, having that sort of involvement to being a local leader, um, a councillor. What made you take that step? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, the sense of responsibility is so heavily weighed on your shoulders. For me, when I walk into that council chamber, the sense of, of the impact on the 335,000 people hasn't left me yet. Um, the sense of, of honour and being grateful for the role is certainly still part of the experience and, I, and I'm still very thankful for being where I am. I'm under no illusion. It is, it is a three-year term for us um, and I think we've got three years to do the best that we can do, each councillor with ethics intact, to, to stand up for the issues that they want to stand up for on behalf of their community. Um, but it, it is only for three years. Why did I put my hand up? I guess it was just, it was, it was just that I thought with the um, regional plan 2036, that we had, that we were looking at the 20 year plan. So I thought for the sake of my children and I am mum, number one, counsellor and all my other hats are, are number two. Uh, well, counsellor's number two and other hats are number three. I really felt that this was the, op the opportunity for me to make a difference for my kids because one child's seven and one, one child's uh, almost two. So in 20 years time, Whatever we decide as a council will come into play and impact directly on them. So that's why I put my hand up this time around. So on that note, mm. um, you've chosen to be on a couple of committees. First, I, I believe, is Employment and Economic Development. Is that what that committee is called? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then the second was the Gosford CBD um, and Waterfront, I think. Yep. Um, so, so why those two choices? Well, I, uh, there is some movement in Gosford, but ultimately I think it's, it's really stuck in some sort of time warp. I mean, I think you walk around and there's, there's, there's so much potential for this area. I mean, we've got the rail, we've got the hospital, we've got the waterfront. It's about connecting it uh, and we need a lot more movement. Mm. We need a lot more money coming in. Uh, we need beautification. And I think if we don't do it now, when are we going to do it? So there, there's been the suggestion um, that the urban design implementation framework that the government architect is working on uh, may have some funds with it. Your party is the party that's in government in New South Wales at the moment. Do you think there's any scope for a bit of a... And I was in Newcastle on the weekend and, and saw the... Um, the level of redevelopment that's going on there. Do you yeah. think there is any potential for some investment to bolster whatever the government architect comes up with? That's my first question. Uh, well, I don't know the answer, to be completely frank. Um, and I, I take on board what you're saying with Newcastle, and that's how I feel. Same with Wollongong. Mm. They've moved ahead. Um, and we still look like an outer suburb of Aleppo. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. embarrassing. It is. It's embarrassing. Um, we we need. I, I just think if we don't make a difference now, yeah, take on board with, with the architect and their work that they're doing. Um, I think that's just the beginning. I think there's a there's a lot 
there's a lot of work that has to be done and it starts with those committees and yeah. the architect and that's so a, a, has council have the councils had an opportunity to discuss um, their vision for Gosford as the regional capital the the regional plan clearly cleanly says it's yep. the regional capital yep. um, and and do you get a sense of cohesion between the councils I do actually so um, with regards to all the surveying that was done at council, uh, what came back from the surveying, and I can't remember the points now, I'd have to go back and have a look and get back to whether it was 30,000 odd points of contact with the community. 36, they said 36, last night. 000. 36 individual pieces of data they gathered. So, thank you. So, whether people are located, residents are located up in the northern section, Warnervale, or whether they're located in Yamina Beach. What came out of that is that we do need a regional strategic centre and that Gosford does need some improvement. Now, I would argue the same, that we need improvement in Wyle and we need improvement in Woi Woi. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't do it all at once. Um, so let's start with Gosford and work on what we've got and try and get it off the ground. So I think really there's, there's the potential for, um, you know, restaurants and cafes. That's why we push through the um, motion on easy to do business platform that encourages more businesses to get off mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah. So that will help them. But there's, there's, you know, there's so much work to do. And I think as a resident, I was just frustrated. Yes. Yeah. And, and to be honest, when I was pregnant, actually jumping off the train at Gosford, uh, and it was about six o'clock, it was uh, coming into, it was quite dark. And I remember there was a gentleman that said to me, um, are you okay? And I thought, well, that was a strange thing to say. I said, oh no, I'm fine, thank you walked out, um, had a look around, uh, this gentleman left, and my husband was coming to pick me up, this is Gosford, and I looked around and I thought, wow, it isn't particularly as safe pleasant. or pleasant mm. as what I want it to be. So if I don't put my hand up to do it, and I want to make that change, then, then more for me. This is the opportunity to make a difference. Okay, now in terms of employment, yep. um, Obviously, our, our health sector has great potential. Yep. Um, we've got some very good agricultural land. Yep. Uh, where, where's the employment going to come from? Do you see it coming from tourism? Do you see it coming from manufacturing? Where's the growth? Um, and then you've also got your finance jobs as well. So that's yes. 900 to 1,000 different jobs that have come into Gosford. So, and then you've got, the, of course, the um, coffee shop economics behind this, that's times five, because all of those people that are now working, the 1,000 or 900 to 1,000, have to go somewhere for lunch. Lunch, coffee, barber, dropping off clothes to the laundromat, you know, picking up a few groceries on the way home. So there is that flow and effect, um, which I believe is times five economically, um, mm -hmm. to different businesses. So that helps out so many more people. Um, yes, I believe that the tourism industry is something that we should definitely be looking at and you're seeing that come up in the council meetings. Um, most of them have been in, you know, live streamed, mm -hmm. uh, same as last night, the Sydney Town motion that McLaughlin put up. So there's a lot of, of movement that we can do in that area, you know, whether we're, we're looking at disability, Indigenous or, um, you know, something su such as old Sydney Town. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't just rely on our... We have beautiful beaches, but we can't just rely on our beaches. And what we're, what a lot of us councillors are frustrated with at the moment is that we're seeing uh, Sydney siders and people sort of international uh, travellers... Drive past. Just drive past, straight through to, to Hunter or further up north. So we're thinking, OK, well, how can we get them to, to come into our neighbourhood and spend money here mm -hmm. for the benefit of our people? Um, so this is a, an ongoing conversation and it's at the forefront mind of Central Coast Council. Um, one of the uh, recent um, community engagement occasions was around Terrigal traffic mm. and in your campaign I remember you saying that that was an issue that you wanted to help the local community out with. Yep. Um, so I got the impression that the community wasn't terribly enamoured with um, council's initial solution. Uh, how do you think that process is going and, and where is it likely to lead to? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Uh, and it's a really good question because for the last fortnight I've been doing a lot of door knocking down in uh, Terrigal at different businesses. 
And I seem to be hearing two different mindsets. Um, one mindset is, well, this looks like it's going to happen, so you know, let it be what will be. Um, and then the other mindset is, I'm not happy with this and we need to do something about it. And I would say probably maybe 70% are in that sort of okay. area. So what I've done last night is put a question on notice asking for another um, town centre forum because I believe that the business owners down there need to be heard um, and they feel like they're not being heard. So regardless of whether someone was to, was to say, well, we have been down there, the business owners that I've spoken to don't believe they've had a say. So we okay. need to rectify that first and foremost mm -hmm. um, and then look at ways to try and incorporate their ideas so that it's a more comprehensive solution. Okay, so you'll see that through your... Um, well, that's what I'm asking for, yes. Okay. And, and um, also you have um, stated in your campaign that you're interested in, uh, again, the, the foreshore at Avoca and at Hardy Spay. Um, mm. Are they things that you've been able to make some tiny steps forward on since the election? Um, so the Avoca Beach foreshore, foreshore upgrade uh, yeah. is going ahead. Uh, the state Fantastic. have backed money yep. into that. 2.8 uh, million? Yep. Uh, so that's all very exciting. It's, it's, that's lovely for not just Avoca Beach residents, but I think for residents across the Central Coast because yep. we love going to Avoca Beach. We do. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a win. With regards to Hardy's Bay, um, this was something I brought up in the, the budget weekend. So we had a whole weekend for strategic budget planning. Um, mm. And it was something I brought up. It's something that's on my wish list that we look at making some movement there and I've requested that we you know look at some designs and and working in with some of the community groups down there so there's no I can't give uh, an ex you know there's no go to from here except for I have raised this I am pushing it on my wish list to try and get some action done there because it is so frustrating. I talk with my hands. <laughs> oh, so do yes. I. <laughs> I'm always throwing mine around. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, it is so frustrating when you're down there, particularly with, with kids. And I, you know, I feel for someone that's in a wheelchair or, or you know, walk a frame or mm. walking stick. You, it's hard to enjoy the and waterfront it's in Hardy Bay. Spot. It's an awesome mm. spot. We've got the wharf there, so so long as um, people can get in, um, and boaties that come off. It's, it's a holiday destination for a lot of people in Sydney, and there's a lot of um, holiday houses there as well. Yes. A, lot of, a lot of our locals as well. So if you're a local or someone visiting the area, how do you get around? It's really frustrating with a pram and a scooter. You can't get around. So no. this, is why I, this is why I think it's important to address it. Okay, so I, I wanted to end by asking you a bit of a philosophical question, which is where we started, really, <laughs> um, about how those, all those hats you wear, motherhood, you, yep. your background in federal um, politi or federal government and, yep. and education, disability services, shapes the way you approach local government? Mm, okay. Well, I mean, for instance, you, you bought the mother in who was looking for an ex one accessible playground. Yeah. And um, I, I thought that was um, telling of a, a, a sort of grassroots approach from you. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's no... Don't get involved in politics if you don't actually want to do the hard work and actually make a difference to real people that you can know and touch. It's not just about fighting for issues not getting anywhere. It's about actually making a difference to people's lives. And that's what the issues should be in line with. So we mm -hmm. can actually make a difference. Um, I guess... I mean, I was voted... I believe I was voted in on the experience that I have, um, you know, with the party and, and with the community that voted voted for me to get in and I'm forever grateful. Um, how has it lined me up? Loved working in federal politics. <clears throat> really enjoyed, so I oversaw the ministerial visits um, and that was a great opportunity. It really was to work with so many different staff and the Fed Police, of course, and, and being able to coordinate the different, and organise the different um, events and and do's that was the, it, Local is incredibly different though, isn't it? Because you are right here. <laughs> but it's good to have that background knowledge as yeah. to what's happening out there, mm. um, regardless of, and I'm a strong liberal, but regardless of which 
part of you and Green's mm. labour will live. Yeah. With regards to um, experience before that, well, I was a, a small business owner, so I ran events and, and did marketing up here on the Central Coast. Um, prior to that, I worked in the education sector, so at Charles Sturt University. I was there for five years and absolutely had a ball, um, marketing communications. Uh, and, and before that, so I've worked for different chambers, Sydney and up here, uh, and have run political events for them uh, and, and festivals. With regards to uh, people with a disability, I do believe that when you, when I went back to my comment about empowering people as part of our liberal values, I do believe that, you know, people such as people with a disability, we can empower them and that we should empower them. And as a disability uh, consultant, um, my clientele were people with, um, you know, hearing disabilities or physical disabilities or, or mental disabilities or emotional disabilities. So there's a whole hundred case loaded every time that I was working with. And, and it was a hard job and it was very grounding. And I think, so I think the more experience you have in life, the more travel you do, the more different jobs you do and that you really sink your teeth into. You know, so you, you get to touch people, make a difference then if you can bring that experience into your next role, whether that's counsellor or journalist, then that can only be a benefit for the whole of the organisation. So or, what's, sorry, what's, whole of the community. What's your next role, Rebecca Gale Collins? Have you got any ambitions? Are you looking at a, a state government tilt or what's uh, next? I, my head is completely in council. Um, and I think it has to be completely in council. I mean, this week we had a day and a half either side of the weekend to get across 600 pages and do all your research so that you're prepped to go into the Monday night meeting. meeting. And as you know from being there, sometimes someone will change one point or a few words and it completely changes the intent of the, um, of the, of the motion. So you've got to stay on the ball. Um, so I think... I, I'm really enjoying council. I'm you, thankful you're to be You're still there. growing into this role. I'm, I'm loving it, but it is a lot of work, um, and there's a lot of people that, that need assistance. Um, so I'm thankful to be there, and my head is in council at the moment. Well, thank you so much for, for having a chat with us, and, oh, and good luck with it all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.